Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. One of the reasons you're able to listen to us for free is because of the incredible people at goodvibes.com, the only place you want to go to buy toys. Goodvibes.com carries all the greatest brands and they're the best quality body safe materials and you could check out the Vibratex. They have the Vibratex Rabbit. Remember the old rabbit from years ago? If you still have one, you should throw it away because the new one is amazing. And they also have the um, the girls, which is the cutest little clitoral stimulators. And then you can also get the Magic Wand, which is the most powerful vibrator of all times. And they just upgraded it, so you got to check it out. Go to my site, sexwithemily.com. Click on the Good Vibrations banner and see my favorite toys because you know I've tried them all. And use co- coupon code GVEMILY20 and get a toy. Because it's time. Really? It is. Get lube. Get whatever you want. Improve your sex life. That is sexatemily.com. Good vibes banner. And use coupon code GVEMILY20. Happy shopping. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. everyone for listening to sex with emily we're talking about sex relationships and everything in between for more information go to sexwithemily.com where you can check out all of our podcasts sign up for our mailing list which you really should sign up for a goddamn mailing list because i send really good emails and i'd love to stay in touch with you and i won't spam you or hurt you or anything like that or sell your name and sign up on itunes also you know what i'm here with menace today hello what up menace Hi. you made a very good suggestion last time we did shows and you said people hey if you if you like us go to itunes Mm-hmm. Put in a review. Yeah. It helps. And a lot of people did. Oh, and they I, did? Awesome. Yeah. And so I think it's, we love it. So if you love us and you like the show, um, go to iTunes and, and as long as you're there, subscribe and cool. do a little review. Because we need to stay ahead of Oprah. Because I know Oprah, she had a podcast like in, we're like in health. Yeah. Like health something. She was some like category. one above us. Yeah. No, we were above her. Oh, we were above yeah, Oprah. We were That's above right. Oprah. Yeah, but you know, kicking that bitch's who, ass. Who knows where she is <laughs> right now? I haven't looked at the iTunes in in a while. I know, but I was it was really like because I don't either. Yeah. Both, you said that I was like, oh, that's really nice because like a few years ago we like charged for the show. Sorry yeah, about and that. People got pissed. People got pissed. You and they wrote things. nasty reviews. That's why you just gotta <laughs> listen to me read ads and support my sponsors, and I'm not gonna charge you for the show. So all is good. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, today's show, we will be answering your emails because I love hearing mm. from you at feedback at sex with emily.com i read all your emails and i answer them on the show and some of the topics include someone's got a kegel question about kegel exercises for Mm -hmm. men and women bad oral sex experiences suspicious boyfriend behavior how to tell if she's really into you how to give a girl multiple orgasms so many exciting things. always good stuff i know and also one thing i have to announce that i am going to be teaching a workshop in san Mm -hmm. diego october 25th at Hustler, the Hustler store there. Mm-hmm. It's a sex toy store, which is amazing. If you've been to the one in the Hustler Hollywood here. Well, now I'm teaching in San Diego. I'm doing the same workshop I did, How to Blow His slash Her Mind in Bed. And it was a smash success, like 300 people. It was crazy, crazy. So we're doing it in San Diego. Come see me there. Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com to RSVP. 
or go to my Sex with Emily page on Facebook and uh, there's an invite there. You can RSVP. There's a lot of military guys in San Diego. Really? In my hookup with I've yeah. never been. You just got to – oh, you've never like been to San once Diego? for five oh, minutes years God. ago. I, uh, if a lot of people disagree with me, but I always say it's like a, a mix between um, Honolulu and San Francisco. To me. San Diego? San Diego, I yeah. I feel like it's kind of just like people hanging out at the beach, working out, getting tan. You said you've never been there. But that's what <laughs> but I'm But I've sure. been there multiple times. Really? Like they had like a sophistication to it? Like San Francisco? San is Diego there. is really cool. I like it a lot. Okay. There's some people that hate it because they're like hipsters that moved there from San Francisco. Right. But it is. Seems like it's perfect great, weather. Yeah. Great weather. Cool downtown. Super clean. Yeah. It's awesome. I love I, it. I'm, I'm very excited to go. And to teach the workshop, yeah. and to go. I've but never, wa- I can't even. Been. But watch out for those military guys. Wait, they live there? That's like their base. Oh, it's a huge military town. There's a bunch of bases. Are they walking there, around yeah. in their military uniforms? Some of them, yeah. See, the thing is with military guys, every friend that I have in the military, they they Tell get me, a. Are they dogs? No, they're not dogs. What happens is they want to get locked down because if they get married, they can get their own house on the base. You know what I'm saying? So they don't. They just don't want to just date some girls because. Oh, they so gotta, they want they want to marry me. They want to marry you right away because then they can get like a free house and stuff oh. like that. Oh, I'd be down with that. <laughs> would I have to be there every day? You would have to live on the base. Because I think it's good to have separate houses. We could. I could just say, yeah, I'll just come out and visit on the weekends. It's only like two hours from here. Yeah, you okay, wouldn't I'll drive like, two hours. You're right. I wouldn't even drive thirty minutes <laughs> yeah. to see the guy at the beach. But that's that's true. Um, Okay, I'll look for the military. So just FYI, okay, while FYI. You're there, look and I'm out teaching for the a blowjob class. Guys. It was so funny because we were talking about Love Line the other night, and Michael's like, Mike Catherwood was like, so does that mean like people are gonna like, well, people guys if they go they'll get blowjobs? I'm like, <laughs> pretty good chance that people are gonna be riled up and I'm gonna Wanna be teaching. Want to practice? Yeah, yeah. totally. So you might even get a blowjob. I'm not, I'm not saying everyone's gonna get a blowjob. <laughs> not for me unless just you're in the military blow- and you have a house. But besides <laughs> that, like blowjobs are not for free there. Um, okay, so Menace, yeah. what up with you? Except for your birthday's coming up, which is very exciting. Yeah, my birthday's coming up um, on the 28th of October. And I don't know when this podcast is being released. Right. Probably before then, right? Yeah. We've got a couple weeks. But the uh, the thing is, you say, oh, you're getting so old, right? I'm going to be 35 years I old. I can't believe Why? that because I met you. We've been doing the show for almost 10 years, and mm-hmm. you were like 25, 26. Mm-hmm. And you were just a young, you were sleeping in the radio station. You were living, you didn't have yeah. a house. Weren't you like homeless? Uh, kind of <laughs> homeless, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, you know, working my way up I in know, radio. you really did. Look at you. Now you're on a billboard in Los Angeles. I just, yeah. just can't believe you're 30. I always think of you as like 28, 27, you know, like, that's but like check, a, you're like a full on adult. But check this out. So I you're look, like a man. I think that I, Happy manhood. I think I look at least legal age, right? Within the past two weeks, I got carded for lottery tickets. Right? And then I got carded at the movie theater to see Gone Girl. Seriously? <laughs> Swear to God. You kind of do look young. You kind of, because you're like, you dress like a, like the hips. I don't even know what it's called with your pants and your things. And what? what are you wearing? I don't know. I'm wearing you, Levi jeans. Your glasses and your baggy no, pants. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't dress like a hipster. But Not hipster. What do you, yeah. what do you call your thing? I don't, I don't have on. a style. No, but you're like, I, I can All see my that. shirts are from like Banana Republic and then. Most of my jeans are from like they're like Hudson jeans, and then I wear like uh, a million pairs of different tennis I, shoes. Yeah, I have like a million pairs of different Nikes and Reeboks right. and my favorite LA gear. But the the thing is, like, why the f am I getting carded? I definitely look older than eighteen years old. I mean, I don't. Yeah, that's true. I don't <laughs> you know, know why. Just the last, you do your skin looks good. You look healthy, yeah. actually. Did you like lose weight or something? You've been exercising. Uh, I've been exercising. Nothing like extreme. You have been, the Fitbit on. We both have I it on, have which is Fitbit so funny. On. Yeah, I'm not. I'm it's gradually. It's hard to get to the ten thousand steps a day. It is. It is. Dude, right? <laughs> but I'm gradually like you know, um, just going being healthier? going to the gym. A little bit healthier, less soda and stuff like that. Good, okay. but um, I did get some sun. I went. I actually went up to the Bay Area just recently. Okay. Um, I took my dad and my sister to the new 49er Stadium that's oh, in there. Oh, okay, right, like, exciting. In Candlestick or whatever. Super it was. No, it's Candlestick's the old one, but the new one is uh, right. in Santa Clara. Oh, didn't over know by that. San Jose. California. I don't care about San Francisco anymore since we moved. I know. Yeah, you shouldn't. But the thing is. Um, Got a bunch of sun and stuff like that. Which you, you look would think like you that, got a little sun in your arm here. A little yeah, thing. you would think that I would get a bunch of sun living here in Los right, Angeles. Right, exactly. Does not happen. You have a pool though. I have a pool, but check you don't this out. Use it. I get up at three three a.m. 
I get to work at like 3.45 a.m., get on the radio at 6 a.m., on the radio until 10, and then I'm in the office till 1, and then I go straight home into my apartment. And what do you do? And then I sit there, and I just work on the show again for the next day. This happens every single day. Until That's that, why and then I'll come we never hang out because I, I work. And then what time do you go to bed? I go to bed by 8 o'clock. Seriously? Every night. Yeah. Every night. Like you're out like 8, 8 o'clock. o'clock. Never 8.15. Nope. I have to be in bed by 8 o'clock. Because how many hours is that? And then you get like That's 7. 7. Yeah. Wow. It, That's intense. It has That's to be like, like Howard Stern. Like not every. Well, I wish I was Howard Stern. But even Howard Stern, he still has a rough time with this. No, schedule, he does. I've been know? here. I've been listening to Howard Stern a bunch, by oh, the way. Good. Yeah. I've been telling you for years. I know, to do I know. But now I listen. To, but I've been the for the last few years. The best ever. interviewer. The best. Ever. The best interviewer. And I just, I love his show. And I, not that I hadn't heard it. I used to have it in my car, but now I listen to it like on my phone, my mm-hmm. whole thing. And yeah, he's amazing. But he always complains about that. But that's freaking brutal. Yeah. But your so, girlfriend's cool with that. Yeah. You know, whatever. But then she probably but, gets home later. Or she's not. Doesn't want to go to bed at eight. Yeah, no, she stays up till like midnight and stuff like that while I'm sleeping in bed. Did she hear you but, get up? And I mean, she must, but she just yeah. used to it. Okay. But the thing is, like, you know, no that's, time for sleep. If, if we're going to be in a relationship, that's just how it's going to be. Yeah, that's you. Exactly. You know, right. And then just take her or leave it. Right. You know, I've very dated girls in the past or like think they're cool with it. And then like their girlfriends that, you know, they want to go turn up or get drunk on a Tuesday night. And my, and my girlfriend at the time would be like, pissed off because I, remember this. I don't want to go out on a Tuesday night when I have to get up at 3 a.m. I've know? always admired that about you because you probably are one of the hardest workers I know and <laughs> that you I mean you let go on the weekend you let loose but yeah, like you're very weekend. regimented with your like work and your schedule and you never just you know you never, never mess go around. off the you're schedule very, you never go off the schedule yeah. which, and I and I might seem like an asshole sometimes like oh come on man and I was like no I don't care there's no, nothing but you're so, out there worth like right you want to be on yeah, you want to be in and i just i've always admired you always show up you never like don't you never i you've never not like shown up or blown off or like you've always that's just me like you, i'm nothing like your real jobs too it's impressive thank you yeah really you're but amazing thanks i try I you. you're amazing too i've known you for and so you've long. been doing this uh like all the time now like this is your like you know, Full-time this is job. your life. And it wasn't. You're doing like crazy amount of podcasts. We'd always do podcasts together, but now you have all these other ones where you're cheating on me. I'm sorry. And then, no, I don't, Anderson, thinks that, is... Anderson thinks I'm cheating on him too now when I'm with you. He gets oh. it. He's just kidding. But yeah, I'm I like do. your old lover. I know you I are. You lover. I know. But no, you Anderson's can't really cool. He's awesome. Do you know him? Have you met him? Uh, well, I've known Anderson. We should all do a show. You guys could just yeah. crash on me the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, it'd be amazing. Like no, no Anderson, not. like, you know, because I know you don't pay attention to any of this kind of stuff. But uh, I I don't know Anderson like super personally, but I've I've uh, met him a few times. But I've known of him for years because such being a fan of Loveline, you know, and Loveline that you you're part of the Loveline. Right, family I'm now. on every Thursday night. And, you know, so a lot of people know who Anderson is. You know, so yeah, that's true. I guess because yeah. they always bring. You're right. And have yeah. you always? No, did you always listen to Loveline? I always up? listen to Loveline. Yeah, like when you were a kid. Not when I was a kid, but um, I mean, you know, you worked I worked at Live 105. I worked at Live 105 in San Francisco, which is a Loveline affiliate. And then so I would, you know, I Did would you work the- listen. I didn't. I didn't never work the right. board for them or anything like right. that. Right. But I would. I would definitely listen to the show all the time. You know, Doctor Drew, and then Adam. You know, when and Adam Carolla. Carolla was on there all the time, they would be on television constantly together. Right. And like, you know, when I was really into watching MTV, they would have shows on MTV. I remember that. Yeah. I just saw uh, Drew the other day. <laughs> He was uh, he was interviewing um, all the all the teen moms and yep. I loved it. Oh, you yeah. love the teen mom show? Oh, my oh God, dude, I, I met Fair Abraham. She's got oh, a whole bunch. Yeah, I just met her at a show this yeah. year, and she's actually going to be at the Hustler Store Hollywood um, mm-hmm. the Friday night, October twenty fourth. Oh, really? Which I'm going to be in San Diego on the twenty fifth. So if you want to go see her, she has a whole new sex toy line. It's like her butt and her whatever. If Crazy. You want to, yeah. I think. Uh, there's this one team mom that I'm so upset with. I got to <laughs> tell Drew is because what? there's this one that's like, I don't know. She's like doing cosmetology or something like that. And she, uh, she has like Auburn hair. And I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, her, like her baby's daddy, he, like this guy, you know what? I, I don't know him personally, so I don't want to call him a douchebag, but, but you know, uh, on television, he comes off as a douchebag, right? Right, which so, happens. Even, but he just has a lot of issues in his right. life. He's like getting DUIs and all this stuff. And the thing is, this team mom is always talking a bunch of crap about him, but yet she's still hooking up with him. Right. 
You know, and that that's happens a- all the time. When I, you know, you see a group of girls and if you get into that group and you talk to them and you see a girl like talking a bunch ish about a guy. Right. That's the guy either she wants to sleep with or she's sleeping with on the DL. You yeah. Know? The one that she's, but you think that women are just always unhappy and complaining to their friends, but at the end of the day, they're going to stay with the guy. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But it's they just so talk funny. about the bad when they get together. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. how does he stay with Then he watches the show and he's like, oh, so you think I'm an asshole or whatever she says about him? Yeah. I mean, uh, when he just did this uh, reunion special with uh, yeah, he remember he was filming it a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I he, he, he got, watched this. Yeah, yeah, he got on the show and he's like, you know, I know I come off and like everyone, it sucks because, you know, he gets you know social media like people can <laughs> message right. you and tell you that you're a douchebag, right? You know? And but it don't be like that's why I'm up with the chick. I'm like, dude, don't be talking all this this ish about him right. and how he's like a bad father. And then still hook up with them. Exactly. You know? stay, was she with them or is she just hooking up with them? She's just hooking up with them. Right. Well, I mean, sometimes that's hard. We get, uh, you know, I'm trying to find someone, the name. The name Teen, of her? Yeah, it's, it's like okay. on Teen Mom too. Or Teen Mom. Like Check it. I don't even know. I've never, I've seen it maybe once. Oh, no, I, you know. Didn't it used to be called 16 and Pregnant? There's 16 and Pregnant that's and then different? there's Teen Mom. Okay. Because yeah. I did see 16 and Pregnant before. I one day watched a marathon for some reason. Like I binged on it when I was with a friend in a hotel room. <laughs> nice. Um, one more thing I have to mention though also mm-hmm. is that I'm going to be giving the keynote and I'm the spokesperson for the Sexual mm-hmm. Health Expo, which is in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. And it's going to be awesome. It's January 17th and 18th. And go to sexualhealthexpo.com. It's the first like consumer show, like men, women, couples can mm-hmm. come. They've got the top sex educators in the country speaking to people and you can take workshops and there's like all the toys they talk about are going to be there and it's going to be an awesome two days and I'm going to be giving away free tickets. So people should email me feedback at sex why you want to go and it's super going to be fun and swanky and you should comment us. Awesome. Um, I know. Oh, I found the team mom. Okay. What's her name? About. Her name's Chelsea. So <laughs> Chelsea, if you watch the show, it's like, I, and the thing sucks is I really like, I show? like Chelsea the most, but you don't like her. But decisions I don't that. like her. Like, dude, don't talk all the smack if you're just still gonna hook up. But women do that all. Guys do I that know, too. I guys know. do that too. Guys are like I hate her. I have nothing to her. And then you see him, he's hooking up with her because oh, well, it's easy. That's just... It's a low hanging fruit. It's hard to get out of relationships when you're, you have a baby yeah. together and used to having sex. It's hard to break up. Yeah, it's like a really like it's like a discipline. It's like quitting a drug. Yeah, when you're trying to get away from someone that you're in a long term relationship mm-hmm. and you have a kid. Yeah. But did they like? I feel bad because Chelsea's parents also they they're like going. <laughs> I love that you're they go yes, through all the Chelsea. they go through all the drama too, you know. And then you're like, they're dealing with all the drama, and then you find out that your daughter's still hooking up with the guy that you dislike, you know. Right. And like, what do you do in that situation? I don't know. Like, I would I mean, be so pissed. How old is she? <laughs> Huh? How old is she? I'm sure she's like in her 20s. 22. I mean, yeah. seriously, people think they're so in love and they're 20. Like, it's just not yeah. that you aren't in love. And in fact, like, you really are in love. But people change and they're not always mm-hmm. emotionally mature enough to, like, handle it. But we get addicted to the sex or attached to the comfort. And you always think, do you remember, like, when you break up with someone in your 20s, even your 30s, I guess, and wherever mm-hmm. in life, you always think, I'm never going to find someone else. What if, mm-hmm. what if, what if this person was right? What if? I'm like, you know what? Guess what? Most time, if you think you want to break up with them, you probably should. Mm-hmm. And there will be someone else that you will find that is yeah. a better suitor. So, did you sure. do that with yourself? Like, what if I made a mistake after you break up with someone? Um, or were you not really in relationships um, until now? No, <laughs> no. Well, I was like, oh, I probably broke up with them for a good reason. Right. You that's know? the thing. It's like I've never regretted. Yeah. Like you have like at those the few time. Weeks. At the time. Yeah. But at the time, you go through in yeah, your head. Like, oh man, should I have really done that? Right. You know? And you tend to put it on a pedestal the whole relationship, mm-hmm. and you glorify it unless yeah. it was like really abusive and awful. But typically, like, if we, you, you go think back, of all the like, good oh, things, yeah. yeah, like, even on, like, a Facebook now, like, I'm friends with all my exes, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, he's having a really good time right now. Like, <laughs> they're out biking. He never biked and hiked with me, probably because I was like, if you mm-hmm. want to hang out, bring over your laptop, because I'm working yeah. tonight. I was really fun. All right, there's date. three things I want to talk to you. We'll go, th- go. Uh, we'll go through real quick. We're talking about exes. It was funny. We had a topic on, on our morning show about... Um, getting invited to weddings of exes. Oh, right? right. And because I get invited to weddings all the time. Yeah, you're in that exes, age. Right? Yeah. And it's it's crazy. And I don't go out of respect for the guy that I don't even know. Like, right. Like I boned your wife. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Wedding. I'm like hanging right. out at your wedding. Yeah. It's like, it's crazy. But so we had this conventional on the radio and uh, p- girls were just like saying, oh, yeah, you know, I had like, Five guys I hooked up with at my at my wedding and all this crazy stuff. And then we had 
this was the ultimate call. We had a call from a girl who said that, oh, I dated this guy like in the past. He's like been a really good friend of mine my entire life. We hooked up and, you know, we've had sex numerous times, but then we broke it off. And then I found um, my husband. We got married. We had a kid. And now my friend is the godfather of the kid. Yeah, I can and, see that. And <laughs> and the 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 dad of the kid does not know about anything. Oh, like, that's not good. Yeah, so that's see? transparent that they dated. Yeah, that's no. I, I know, know couples who are like godparents to their exes' kids. That's not weird. Well, you know me. I'm friends with yeah. all my exes, and I travel with them. And but the guy does not. That's know. bad. That's dishonest. See, I think that the guy. <laughs> If he's cool that you guys used to sleep together and you're mm-hmm. friends, I think men and women can't be friends after they break up. Yeah. Absolutely. If you find somebody, they well, can. Well, you too. You go like on vacations I go to Mexico. together. I went with to Mexico. Cur- right. Current boyfriends. You go and my like. Ex. You do and this like current. weird orgy cabin stuff. I don't know. Yeah, we used to go to the cabin. There was no orgies. <laughs> I wish there were orgies. But no, my ex, yeah. We used to always go to the cabin. We went to Mexico that year with the with but the, now they're both exes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. We can hang like that. I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't see crazy. move out. Because the thing is, if you're with somebody and you bond with them, and my the first ex that I was with who managed the whole trip thing, mm-hmm. it's like we were really, really close. Like we really loved each other in the time that we were together. We weren't best friends right away right after we broke up. It was hard. Mm-hmm. But then usually if you're with someone, like there is a friendship there and you care about each other and we had the same group of friends. So we just, you know, we had dated eight years earlier. It wasn't like it was, we were still sleeping together, although we did kind of sleep together a few years after we broke <laughs> up. Um, but then he's fine with my new guy. You know, I don't know. You just uh, have to be comfortable with yourself. What's the I, second thing? I guess. And okay, or the third, second thing is, second. there's a, a movie everyone needs to go see is Gone Girl. It's so good. Don't give away the ending if you know the ending. I'm dying to see it. But people, and don't be that person if you see it, give away the ending. Like it's immediately, immediately, if you haven't heard about the ending, because I think if you do hear about it, it might ruin it for you. Okay, don't. But immediately go see the movie like right now after you hear the podcast. Because but why? It's just so good. What made it's, you, what, like, what, oh, what part of it? Like, is it I don't like know. Suspense? Well, it's about, it romance? you know, being married for a long time and like not being interested in the, in the marriage. That's, oh, that's the part that I can give you. That is a good one. So if you're like. Is it hopeful? Um, I don't no, know. I kind of know the story. Yeah, okay. I, so I'm not don't tell me anything. Boy. Don't tell me anything. I'm not going to tell you. But anything. I'm going to go see okay. it. What and are the, the movies? Thir- yeah. And the third thing is, so I I heard <laughs> some. Uh, I don't know if you talked about this in past podcasts, but we didn't like Hitachi like sell off the, the magic, magic wand? wand. Yeah, it's no longer the, Hitachi magic wand. Just magic. Are they wand. like making it still? No, they're not making it. So another manufacturer is making it. Yes, it was just in the news recently with some porn star who got burnt. I using know. That. She got burnt using the old Hitachi, right? Oh, exactly. the old one? Yeah, it was one? a Hitachi. It was an old one. It was oh, the old, old, old one. The old version. Yes. Throwback. It was a Hitachi. Well, because they said it was the Hitachi. <laughs> yeah. That's why you should get the new one because it's actually lighter weight and it doesn't, mm-hmm. whatever, but her vagina, yeah. Sparks it's crazy, sleep. She was right? probably pushing it. To, how does that happen? Yeah. Like, Honestly, like that's that's bad for Hitachi for the old magic wands, which is why if you have one and it could be malfunctioning, you got to get on that new one. Yeah, it's been a new. The, right now, if you go to goodvibes.com, mm-hmm. keep a code GV only twenty, get a new one, and they're lighter because weight. You say like that one, and then the uh, the rabbit are just like up there, right? Yeah, and they're, like the most popular. But I wonder what else she was doing. Like, how long was it on mm-hmm. for? I don't know. Like yeah. three hours was she? You know, who knows? But you're right. I did see that. It's and that crazy. was the Hitachi magic wand. And that is no longer Hitachi. They separated. They're just mm-hmm. making TVs now, I guess. So is there any, like, sex and technology stuff that you've been hearing about? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, there's so many, like, dating apps right now. Right mm-hmm. now there's Healthvana, which is a new app that shares your sexual history, which I think I came up with this before. <laughs> yeah. That if, you, if you're if you dating and things are going great, and then comes that awkward moment when your partner casually inquires, hey, so do you have any, like, STDs or mm-hmm. anything? You know, the conversation? So next time that happens, you can verbally relay your sexual history. You can whip out your smartphone, call up Healthvana, and a free app that retrieves your test directly from the labs, sends to your smartphone. Users can also forward results to new doctors and to partners to download the same app. It was developed with the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Cool. Sends chlamydia, HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea results. Kind of can be a buzzkill, though. Mm, if you're like, yeah. oh, wait, here, oops, I got gonorrhea. We're not getting on tonight. But that's cool technology. I mean, because and use condoms, people, all the time. I swear to God, no one uses condoms. I was talking to a guy friend about that. I'm like, do you use condoms? No. He's like, no one. I'm like, I know. I feel like 
people just don't they, they think that they're safe it. they forgot yeah. that you can get diseases and i get it, it's not mm. fun or sexy but like go buy them have them next to your bed and also a lot of guys that haven't found the condoms that work for them because like every condom fits differently right mm-hmm. i don't not have a penis but there are some that you found right that's your jam yeah. like thinner or bigger or whatever mm. da, da. They, there's some that have like her pleasure they have lube in them uh lifestyles make some great condoms right now they just sent me like a huge box i couldn't believe the variety so mm. Shop around a little and find ones work, but work goddamn condoms. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what conversations, what else were you thinking? Oh, there's a new friggin' Tinder app that's actually for sex called Mixer. So Tinder really? is the online dating app that copied Grindr, which was the mm-hmm. gay app. But everyone yeah. says Tinder is a dating a, a hookup app. And what's it's funny because, all right, that's good because remember years ago when Grindr was really like yes, hot. hot, which it still is really hot, but... It was the only thing out there. And we would always joke like, oh, this would never work for the single person. because Straight it'd be, people. It's for straight people because it's like it'll be a billion single guys on there and two, right. two girls, right? But I think like Tinder has gradually – It primed people yeah, for this For maybe? The, like the straight hookup app. Yeah. Because Tinder was just like Grindr but it was like disguised as just like dating – and now people are just opening up to like, all right, this is straight. Yeah, Mixer's hook like hook up. Tinder's like maybe yeah. hook up, whatever. But Mixer is somewhat different. You knows exactly. You know exactly what you're getting, and it finds people in your proximity geographically, and you put in like your age and all that stuff or what you're looking for, and you can hook up with them. Wow. Which is so overrated anyway, because you know what? There's another another study that came out that's reading like women. Mm-hmm. I mean, this this has been around for a long time, but like sex is just not as satisfying just during a hookup. It's fun, the anticipation, mm-hmm. but we, women don't have orgasm. They fake them. If you, they, most women have an orgasm the first time together are faking it. Really? And not that it's all about the orgasm. It's actually the best mm-hmm. part of sex, I think, for a lot of women is the anticipation and the buildup and the chase and the, the excitement that comes. But... I don't know. I just think that people are just having a lot of crazy. <laughs> I don't know. What am I getting like? Like so jaded? But I just feel like it's better just to get to know someone. And, wow, and who are them. you? I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like ugh, that awkwardness and the faking. And like, uh-huh. I mean, I, not that I fake it. I just didn't have one, and you didn't care because we were just hooking up, and you pounded away, mm-hmm. and like the whole thing. It's just not safe. You're changing before my eyes. <laughs> finally, no. Years I was never, later. To, but I've never been really into like just hooking up. Have I? No. It just came off that way because you were like never really fully into anybody that you were dating. Well, I'm still never into anyone I'm dating. Yeah. And I still, but I just like wouldn't but, hook up with someone in a night that I meet. Yeah, I, but it just, it just I comes have. off that way. You're like, oh, I'm just hooking up with this guy. I don't really care. Right. And you now know? I just don't hook up with people I don't care with anymore. Now I just, I don't do anything. Now you're totally um, celibate, it seems. I'm not celibate. <laughs> but do you remember my manatorium? That yeah, I ran like a few years yeah. ago. It was like a moratorium on men. And I did it for like six months. I had mm. no sex, which because I was actually having too much sex. Too much sex, yeah. Too many partners with people mm. I didn't like and mm. I wasn't that into. And I actually did it. And I was remember like people were like, Can I have a woman in Torium Mantor? And I actually toyed with it again. Because mm-hmm. I found myself getting in the same situation where I was like dating people that I wasn't, which is obviously my pattern that into. And I just thought, what if I just cleared the whole men thing out and just you know, worked on myself and da, da, da. But then now I have a hot date like next week. So <laughs> yeah. I kind of gave it up. But that was fun. Good times. Okay. Mm. We can um get into some emails. All right. So thanks everyone for emailing me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. As you know, I love hearing from you. Um, here's one about Kegels for Men. Kegel exercises for men. Hi, Emily. This Thank you for your app and your work. I have an app called Kegel Camp. My question is, when doing Kegels, is it better to be doing it with an erection? Is one more beneficial than the other? Thank you, Matthew. Um, no, you're not supposed to do it with an erection, actually. Um, it's better to do it without one, but you mm-hmm. might get one while you're doing them. The important thing for Kegel exercises is, and if you don't know what they are, because I'm always surprised, not surprised, but a lot of people don't know what they are, that men and women can do them. Five minutes a day, it's your pee, it's your pee stopping mm-hmm. muscles, so you stop and start the flow of urine. And for five minutes a day, you can learn to last longer in bed, have stronger orgasms for men and for women, stronger orgasms. And so my app has 20 levels and it reminds you. The thing about it is like doctors tell all men to do it for like prostate health, but no one remembers, even though it's so easy to sit at traffic light. So my mm. app pops up, reminds you, time for Kegel Camp, and then my voice walks you through it. Yeah. Five minutes a day and there's 20 levels. And people get to these levels. Like they get to level 20. Like they've 
the couples have like mm-hmm. races and they send me their screen grabs and stuff. Wow. Yeah, because when it first came out, it only had 10 levels, but now yeah. it's 20. So anyway, Kegel Camp, you'll have better sex. But no, Matthew, I would say um, it's better to do it without an erection and... Um, because then you'll just be jacking off and you won't finish the five-minute <laughs> thing. You'll just be excited. Exactly. Just get all hot and bothered. Um, so the next thing is how to get over a bad oral sex experience. But before that, a word from our sponsor. You can think about that. This is actually a man writing in who had a bad oral sex experience. Okay. And you might be able to relate to that. But first, a word from our amazing sponsors. Okay. So thanks, everyone, for listening to the show. And I love being able to help you have the sex and relationships you want. So I only talk about things that I think are going to improve your sex life. Like the Fleshlight is the number one sex toy for men for a reason. First of all, it actually stimulates the feeling of having real sex. And I, you know, women, we have hundreds of sex toys we mm-hmm. can choose from. So many, right, Manus? And you're yeah. like, oh, every guy's like, oh, I got my hand. What's the problem? But yeah. this feels like, like it's, you mix it up. Yeah. They what don't if you sell, don't have a partner? They don't sell so many Fleshlights because they suck. No, you know? they're amazing. And it's so funny because when I first started working from like a lot of them, you know, you can get them like shaped like porn stars if you're, if yeah. you're a porn star. But it's like, I'm like, people don't necessarily want that. They just, they might just want one because it feels freaking good. And even Madison, who's sitting here, my assistant, she gave one to her boyfriend who's 24. And she's psyched because she's like, you know what? If I don't have sex, just go have sex with the flesh. And he loves it. So all the people I've given it to, and, Ma- and Madison actually wrote a great blog about it on our website, which is hilarious, sexonme.com, that like, it's just, it's cool. Like your wife or your partner has toys. This is just a little something and you can get the stamina training unit, which helps you last longer. And every guy I've given it to is no one's ever said I hated that and I'm never using it again. They actually live for it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. It's not going to replace your partner, but it feels really good. And if you don't have a partner, you should try it. Plus, they just told me that they're now giving away all my listeners, fleshlight.com, use coupon code EMILY and you get a free bottle of their award-winning flesh lube, which is awesome because I always think everyone needs like a little lube makes everything better so try that go to fleshlight.com use coupon code emily and get a bottle of their flesh lube sweet I know and then also more things about your penis permescent one in three men suffers from premature ejaculation but you don't have to now with permescent the only FDA approved treatment for premature ejaculation even if you just want to last longer like even if you're like not a minute man but you're like a four minute man because there is an orgasm gap and women take you know a little bit longer to orgasm sometimes <laughs> Uh, you can try Permescent. It's a quickly absorbing delay spray you put on your penis. There's no side effects. And you last longer in bed and you don't have to like think about baseball or whatever. What do you think about when you don't want to orgasm? Oh, just, just anything but sex? Right, like what? Like like my friends said it's like thinks, thinks about like dead rats in a trash can. Dead rats in a trash Which can? Which is kind of I think I would just be like completely no, grossed out. No, once I start trying not to think about it, that's when, you know. Right. Well, a lot of guys, you know, mm. they think about, but whatever, this way you don't have to even like, worry about just it. Just slow down, man. Yeah, you know? exactly. And uh, Promescent will help you so you don't have to worry about it. So go to Promescent.com. Check it out. Okay. Cool. Now we're going to talk about oral sex. All right. Which is my favorite subject. Always. <laughs> we're going to help a guy here. Dear Emily, I have a question that requires a bit of explanation. The first and last time I tried oral on a woman, I was 17. She apparently did not have a good genital hygiene. The smell was horrible. But being 17 and a trooper, I did it anyways. I gagged, I lost my erection, and both of us left the encounter embarrassed and unsatisfied. (laughs) Ever since then, every time I get close to a vagina, I have a flashback to that smell and gag. (laughs) How do I get over this? From Tom. Hypnotist. Oh, God. I mean, that's kind of, that's sort of post-traumatic vagina disorder like in post-traumatic yeah. stressor like it's sort of that's like a really bad experience and I could see he doesn't say how old he is now um, and how long it's been going on but I feel like you okay. you could also take a shower together like beforehand yeah you could try to I mean because this is gonna do the it deal. in the shower yeah Try to just be like, let's clean, you know, clean up. Like, that's not all women, but guys have experiences like this, right? And you get mm, through them. Yeah. But this sounds pretty traumatic, like gagging. That's what I'm saying. He got to go to the hypnotist. He's got. He's got to he go. He got to go. He got to go hypnotist. Or yeah, I mean, it could be. You could talk to a therapist. You could do some EMDR training to get I over don't this. Know but about I therapist. feel like that's a bit much. No, but there's like tra- I mean, I don't know. He could really. I think that like every <laughs> vagina is different. First of all, and they're not all going to have that odor to it, yeah. which some do, some don't. And I actually just did a show on this that we were talking about like hygiene and women, and that I didn't even know till I got a little older. Like before you have sex with someone, you should just. Go in, you know you're going to fool around. Go in the bathroom and like wipe wipe down. Like you don't have like toilet yeah. paper. We talked about actually Madison brought this up. Who's my toilet paper crumbs 
Has that ever happened to you in a woman's vagina where she had like toilet paper crumbs? Yeah. No. No one's ever. You've never had the like, things in there like she left toilet paper or whatever. No. Okay, so this can happen, <laughs> and so just take some water, use the hand towel, whatever it is, and just wipe it out. And guys should do it too. All right. So yeah. No. Can happen. Definitely, guys. You have you have something for the down. But under what ta- down under comfort? Yeah. Down under comfort, emilytony.com. If you use it, it's like deodorant for your balls. You can use it between your legs. It smells. You can use it in your lower back. Do you need some more? I do. Well, you say that to me every single time. I have some in my trunk. Never give it to me. I have some in my trunk. Yep. My balls are always smelling. I know. See? It's hot here in Los Angeles. Guys, it's always hot, which I love. But guys, they they just they don't realize that they think they showered in the morning, whatever. So down under comfort is Mm -hmm. do you know that men's health voted down under comfort the number one product that you didn't know that you needed until you tried it wow that's awesome emily and tony dot com use coupon code emily so anyway tom here's the deal not every vagina is going to be like this i'm really sorry you had this problem but i think that if you take a sexy shower which is great you can like give her a massage and like then you'll know that like at least she's fresh and clean at the beginning and then you'll start to see that all vaginas are not like that they're not we're all going to bad penis. We're all going to bad experiences, but you got to move through it. And maybe he could use some hip, hypnosis if it's really that severe, which I don't know that hypnosis has ever – have they ever cured you of anything? Hypnosis? Uh, no. Well, I've never been hypnotized. Right. Like, but people like quit smoking and stuff. I mean, I think I, it's part I, of mine. <laughs> they did it like when I was part of a morning show like, I don't know, like 13 years ago. They brought in a hypnotist and – the they're trying to hypnotize me, but I bit my tongue because I didn't want to get hypnotized. Why? Because I didn't know what they were gonna want me. Oh, like, you could have like, embarrassed yourself. I could have like said crazy stuff, you know, that right. I didn't want to say. Right? No, that happens for, for real. But but some people it works. Okay, so this another email. Mm-hmm. Suspicious boyfriend behavior, which there's a lot of that going around lately. Because and girlfriend what? behavior. Because we're all online. We're all doing you things. You guys are the most effing scandalous people on the planet i know we never, never get co- caught never, never get, get caught. caught i'm never, a really i used to be a really good never cheater. cop to anything and you can justify anything <laughs> you know guys That's do it. the same thing no guys are too effing guys stupid. are stupid they don't clear their browsers they, they leave their facebook the page time. open they don't know how to justify things like you like we're, uh, we're so good at it we're yeah. like oh no what do you mean we're talking uh <laughs> we were talking before we are better cheaters uh, we we're talking before about you know, these phone calls are getting, you know, about, uh, you know, sexual confessionals, something that we we did on this morning show that I'm part of in L.A. Right. And you did sexual confessionals without me on the morning I show? I know, okay. right? It's called The Woody Show if you it's want to listen the to the show, podcast yeah. or if you're in L.A. Go ahead. Yeah. And the, the thing was this girl called in and she said, oh, you know, there was this guy that I dated before, my boyfriend who I love, who I've been with like two years, and um, I... I ran into him and I kissed him and we made out. Right. She's like, all we did was make out. And she went to her current boyfriend and said, Hey, this Uh, happened, which is whatever. That's what everyone says what to do. And she was saying, Oh yeah. You know, it's because I just felt like I never had closure with the other guy. That was you closure. Know, okay. I was like, yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, closure, yeah, yeah. closure. That's opening up a whole can of worms. I was like, there. really closure. Come on, dude. You know? Right. That's again. That's like women justifying, right? She said, "Oh yeah," and then so, like, a couple months later, I ran into the guy again, and then we like we hooked up again, but I didn't tell him this time. Oh, like, that's so. See you guys. And she's like, and going on. She's on the radio. Is like, her boyfriend listening? Yeah. Who knows? Right. But she's like again going on. Like justifying it, right? right. Well, Saying, I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah, because well, she's like, I just, already been with him I in the just past. No, she's like, I just didn't have closure with this one guy, you know? Well, if you guys like, you're insane now. Yeah, you totally say? said that you're right. insane. But the thing but is, guys like, do this too. Yeah, but guys don't justify it like you guys can. <laughs> guys just block it out and they can no, you like you make it like so you, you don't feel bad about it. Yeah, I kind of block yeah. it. Right? I'm, but I'm you like know? a dude. But guys don't feel bad either. They just can come. Huh? They think it's sex. Sex is sex. Yeah, yeah. See, that's and what I'm saying. But you, you're like trying to say women that it's justify because the yeah, they're more yeah. emotionally whatever. But yeah. I was able to just compart when I cheated in the past. I'm a reformed you're cheater. Like, yeah, whatever. What? No, and that's I just the, blocked yeah, yeah, yeah. it. I was really good at blocking, I guess, and I didn't think that it really mattered. Yeah. No, it did. But it was never, I never, what I did was a cheater. Mm-hmm. And now that's why I just don't commit as much unless I'm really ready. But when it was, I, it was that I, I wouldn't necessarily, it was never in the, in the country or mm-hmm. in the state. It was yeah. when I was traveling, and it was never like ongoing, like an ongoing affair with someone. Yeah. So that's my justification. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, here I go. Anyway, let's hear from this one. So, Emily, I hope you're well. 
I recently came across your podcast and I have to tell you I absolutely love your shows. I've been ranting and raving about you to anyone I come in contact with. But I have a question that I would love to get your view on. I've been seeing my boyfriend for the past two years and only recently did the deed after I brought up the question why we haven't done it yet. First, I felt that he wasn't just into doing it, but after snooping, I found a girl sending him half-naked pictures, found condoms in his car that at random would change color. Basically, (laughs) one week it would be one color and another different. Yeah. So that means there were several, I guess. I've discussed this with him, but was given a lame story as these belonged to his friend, and he told me that he would put a stop to the girl flirting and sending pictures. Should I be worried, or am I just reading too much into his lack of interest i can understand after waiting six months to have sex is a show respect but two years isn't that suspicious how should i handle this would love to hear from you warm regards ashley you're together for like two years. okay ashley i did she say how old she is i Uh, wonder if it's like ashley what no i wonder if it's like a long run no she's not two years this is just like i'm just confused by i mean there's naked girls yeah, there's photos, so yeah. and they haven't had sex, and there's condoms in his car. Yeah, like it's probably like not even like <laughs> like an SUV. It's like yeah. just like in the car. Like seriously, because I'm seeing like if it's a truck, his friends are all. I don't even know why that makes a difference. What's crazy Listen. is he might like having sex with somebody else, but he likes being in a relationship with you. That might be. Going but they've on never too. even had sex. Like I know this that's to me is like awkward. I don't even hell. know where to start with this. <laughs> but I mean, I you've got to bring it up to him, of course. And that it's actually disrespectful for him to getting pictures from other women. Sometimes. It's and been have you asked him, you know, why? Like, why has he waited? So, like, two years just seems, I mean, six months. Yeah. I mean, I know people have done that. But two years mm-hmm. is just like, it's it's like your roommates, your friends. Your, yeah. How does a guy go to, and then I would be thinking, like, if I really think that he's gay, but she's mm-hmm. finding condoms. Either he's gay and those really are, or he's having sex with men. Mm-hmm. Right? Or yeah. he's just cheating. Like, what, 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 you're a man. Why would a guy do this? Do you think he's gay and he doesn't want to come out and he's having sex with men? Ashley, you should mm. use protection. There's something going on here <laughs> yeah. if you do have sex with them eventually. But two years? Yeah, definitely. Like, you're you're wasting your time. You need to talk to this person yeah. and find out what's going on. And she doesn't even say what she really likes about him. I mean, honestly, I, I would be very suspicious Fun. of all these things. Yeah. And I don't – maybe just, you're, you're a little bit younger, Ashley, and I would just, like, try to get some answers and move on. Set a deadline to this. And I hate to say yeah. just break up. I don't know. There's two sides to every yeah. story. Have a conversation. Have a conversation. Not a heated conversation. Tell them how it makes you feel when you find the photos mm-hmm. and how it makes you feel when you find the condoms and that you haven't had sex. You need to have the sex conversation after two years. Get some answers. Mm-hmm. And then talk to some of your rational, smart people in your life that you trust, that you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe not even a girlfriend because you always say girlfriends they give you advice you don't listen. But but really, I think this is a situation that you have to make a decision to go either way really soon. People just stay in relationships way too long that then they're unhappy. And and I try yeah. to give them advice and they're not ready. They they ask me. You only get one life. It's true. Don't Ashley, waste your you time. are in one life and you should be having sex and having really good sex mm-hmm. with someone who cherishes you and loves you and respects you. And even like the naked girl, and I know you're saying that's not a big deal, like to get naked photos from another, but if well, you're sometimes dating you get someone, them like unsolicited. Yeah, dude, you know? I get, yeah, I know. I know you do, but. These hoes out there. But if you and see dudes him, sending wiener but pics she, to they're chicks. flirting and stuff. I'm sure it's yeah. like a flirting thing that she saw in the text, but we'd all just, not only do we justify what we cheat you're saying women but you justify someone's behavior that you're dating because you Mm. don't want to look at the truth yeah truth you got to look at the truth totally agree okay so another one how to tell if she's interested dear emily how do you know if a girl is talking to you because you are a good conversation good conversationalist or because she wants to hook up thanks jonathan this is the ultimate question we've been talking about for years because guys are so effing dumb like we do not (laughs) pick up on signs at all. Nope. At all. We do not know if a girl's interested in us unless they tell us to our face. Exactly. Or like tell their friend. Or grab <laughs> you and yeah. kiss you or something. You know? So, um, yeah, it's true. It sucks because I wish I would have known like a bunch of times. I know. You could have gotten laid so many more times. Yeah, like but, women come up to you later like, I had the biggest crush on you in high school like, or college. You're like, you really? Serious? Why didn't you tell me? I get yeah. it. I get I hate it. hate it. She, okay, so Jonathan, the thing is, you don't know maybe mm-hmm. for sure. But if she's talking to you for a long time and you're a good conversationalist, I mean, she might not have even decided yet. She might mm-hmm. just think he's good. But, you know, I think it's a pretty good chance if she's sitting talking to you, it's probably because yeah. she's interested. And here's another thing. And oh. let her know you want yeah. to avoid the friend zone. So how long are you talking to her? If you're interested in her as well, 
mm-hmm. then make a plan with her. Say, hey, Saturday night, what do you, let, let's go out. Let's go here. Or, like, try to kiss her. I mean, see, how long has she been, like, has this been going weeks and weeks and you're just, she's just dumping her whole life on you? And maybe she's just looking at you at the friend zone. But if it's, if a lot of girls are coming up and chatting with you for, you know, they're probably interested. And if you're interested in them, that's the important thing because then you should just make you the just move. Do Let it, it be dude. known. We, Kiss, we always. Yeah, we've talked about this for years on We're the like show. a married couple. We could, like, I know, finish right? It's just like, yeah. Look, if she's she's not into you and you're into her, then good. You already figured it out. If you uh, you make a move and she's not into it, guess what? No, you're not gonna die. You're not gonna <laughs> like, die. Nothing physically. She's not gonna kill you. Nothing physically is gonna happen to you. Maybe yeah, you might be depressed for a second. You're like, oh, I really like this girl. She's not into me. But good, you didn't waste any time. Again. You only have one life. Exactly. I've been that person where I don't know if she likes me or not. And then I don't make a move. And then I I wasted all this time. Right. You know, and I could have just moved on to the next person and would have been happy. You know, exactly. So I believe that is this is a great takeaway from all of this that you people kind of start taking responsibility for their own lives. And seriously, Jonathan, Mm -hmm. if you're interested in them as a man, like you might get rejected, but it doesn't it gets easier. Yeah. And it's practice. And you just if you're interested in her, be like, let it know. Like. You know, touch her, not in a gropey way, but, like, there's certain things you could do to let her know that you're interested and to avoid the friend zone and let her know right away. Like, hey, let's, let's Saturday night, you're and, coming with me. You know, we're going out. And just women love confident men, too, anyways, yes. you know? Yes. If you don't have confidence, just fake it. Who cares? You got to fake it till you make it because it's true. The more yeah. that you practice talking, so for guys listening, the more that you... It's a muscle. Mm-hmm. It really is like like the dating muscle, the talking to women or men muscle. Like you got to practice. Yeah. So whenever you're out, like just start talking to, to women wherever you go. Men, where, say hi. Like practice those skills and then it won't seem as yeah. uncomfortable. You might be like walking a by and you'll see this girl with this guy and you're like, how is that guy with that girl? And I'll guarantee you most of the time it's because he had the guts and the confidence to go ask her out when it's other true. people didn't. It's so true. And yeah. a guy's like, oh, he probably is really rich. Or da, da, da. No, he's just confident. It's, it's confidence. And, yeah. and I have to say that I didn't even know as much about this until I started doing the show is that the guys that, that I've essentially dated in my life, most of them, are the ones who had the balls to like ask me out or to start mm-hmm. talking to me or hit on me in a confident way. Yeah. But there was all these really nice guys, like a lot of our listeners sitting in the corner probably that might have wanted to date me that I would never have known because I didn't go up to them. And... Yes, and they so, were really nice guys who didn't know how to talk to women. Because I know all these men that are amazing and mm-hmm. have just this one thing. And what I'm saying is it is a skill set. And you can mm-hmm. learn it. And you can get comfortable with so it. So don't worry about women sign yeah. and stuff like that. Like, exactly. That's our takeaway. Just don't go worry for about it, it if you want it, you know? Exactly. And uh, she's not going to be – I've had guy friends try to kiss me and I've said no. But I didn't get, like, mad or whatever. It's all yeah. fine. It's all good. Nothing to lose. Okay. How to give a girl multiple orgasms. I love men who care about female pleasure. <laughs> Emily, could you advise, please, the best way to get a woman to orgasm? Or better still, multi-orgasm. And mm-hmm. would you recommend this uh, for the best yeah. sexual position to achieve this? Thank you, Emily. Kind yeah. regards, Ron. It's called the YSL purse. You just like hand it over and then they instant. They instantly orgasm. orgasm. It's yeah. so amazing. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it is magic. true. You got to go shopping. Gucci. It is a little bit costly. <laughs> but Might, you just mice cut, run you 2000 bucks. Some but... Christian Louboutins. Some Versace. I know. I still haven't dated that guy yet. The Louboutin guy? Just any guy who's like, I need guys to buy me really, really, well, yeah, they're really nice things. It'd be awesome. Maybe <laughs> I had more orgasms. No, really, Ron. Every <laughs> woman is different. They all orgasm differently. And the most important thing is that you need to communicate with them how they orgasm. So if you're with a woman, like a lot of women can orgasm, you know, on top or on the bottom, but most women need their clitoris stimulated first. Before they can even, you know, that's how they have an orgasm. A lot of women just have clitoral orgasms. And then other women can have like multiples by their G-spot. So when you're they're actually having sex and their clitoris G-spot during sex, like they could mix it all up. But you don't, it's, you're not going to be able to figure out without talking to the person about how she orgasms or trying to figure it out. She might already know how to move. And so if she's never, not even orgasming at all, she might not have ever had an orgasm. And so a lot of women expect men just to be able to give them that orgasm. But really, it's a woman's responsibility. So I would, I would just give do a lot of foreplay because that'll really help her have an orgasm. Like go down on her, and a lot of women can have orgasms that way on her clitoris. In fact, a lot of women need to have an orgasm first, like a clitoral orgasm, before they can have one during like a G spot orgasm during sex. So warm her up, and even if it's not oral, whatever you do to warm her up, foreplay, um, oral sex, give her a massage, 
will get her turned on and more in the mood and more likely to have more orgasms. But if you just like go ahead and stick it in, like that's probably not going to be the time she's going to have multiples. So um, target her G-spot or clitoris. You can find the best way to find her G-spot beforehand if you like are going down or you can use your finger and the come hither motion. I feel like people already like go to my website and Google G-spot location. Yeah. We, sexlandme.com. No, one, sexlandme.com. no one's done the G-spot locator app yet. By the way, see, I told Dr. Drew about it. He just laughed. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how it's going to work. Um, <laughs> and then sex toys are amazing. A lot of women yeah. might have toys and they might not want to tell you that a lot of women just can't have an orgasm with a guy or during during intercourse. And there's like little clitoral toys or whatever. Don't be intimidated. She might use that. You might want to use that on her while you're going down on her. You can use your tongue and the vibrator. She can use it during sex. Ask her. She'll probably show you that she has one, but be really cool about it, and then she'll have orgasms. And it's not just because of the toy. It's a combination. It's not going to replace you. Don't be freaked out. And um, that's what I suggest, Ron. But I think that's great that, you know, if you're in a long-term relationship, let me look a lot. I don't know if you are, but but there are, again, there is no sexual position. you got to talk to her and you got to work on it. But women can have multiples. Women can have ten. I've had 10. It's crazy. It's crazy. There was this news story, the other guy, where the guy who can't stop having orgasms, he would like have 100 plus in a day. Really? Yeah. I've heard about, I heard a woman like this, but yeah, it's kind of a burden. Okay. So uh, it can be. Okay. So I think we're going to, we're going to wrap up now. We do. Yeah. Have to wrap up right now. Oh. I want to. I know. I love you. (laughs) It's Friday. We got to go party. Um, It was so awesome seeing you. It was nice seeing you too. And 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 thank you for everyone that always. Hits me up uh, on Twitter and Instagram, Menace, M-E-N-A-C-E, and talk about the show and stuff exactly. like that. That's cool. I know. It is awesome. People love you. They love us. They love us together. We're back together. Ten years. It's almost our 10-year anniversary of doing I know. the show. I was thinking we have to do something. Like, we used to talk right. about, remember we were like the 69th show, and mm-hmm. then we were like the 169th show, yeah. and now it's like 2,000 that I've done. Mm-hmm. Can we do something? Yeah, we can Ten do year, something. A live show? A live Let's show? That. Yeah. What do you mean, live show? We do show? like a live podcast show somewhere in L.A. People right. aren't doing that. That's like the trend. It is the trend. Do I want to do? We've never done a live show, have we? No, we've talked about it. Let's do that. Okay. Ten university. All done right. and done. Okay, you're awesome. Thanks, Menace. And everyone, remember check me out uh, on Facebook. Sex. With, uh, what is it? Facebook.com/slash/sexwithemily. And on Twitter, and on Instagram, it's all sex with Emily across the board. And also, um, come see me in San Diego, October 25th, at the Hustle Workshop. What else? I just love you all. And I so appreciate hearing from you. And thanks so much for listening. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. Okay, just like I was talking about earlier, everyone, I've got a product that will change your life. Down under comfort, if you have that feeling. It's like anywhere you sweat, that not so fresh feeling. Your balls, your lower back. It's for men and for women. Boob sweat, under arms. And my friend, like, uses it when he plays guitar. Like, I mean, it can be used as a dry shampoo. There's all these ways. Men's Health just voted, like I said, top product that you didn't know that you needed. Down under comfort, it smells amazing. It's like a cream to a powder formula. It's kind of to replace that messy talcum powder that you use, and it's just so much better than that. You're going to die. you got to try it, emilyandtony.com. Use coupon code EMILY for 20% off. Check it out. You will love it. Thanks, everyone, for listening.